How do you feel, buddy? I feel good. Tyrannicus Music Group. This is the last step. Let's get it. People have been asking, what's JMV, what's Geranicus, where did that all come from? And when they see the info in the IG page saying rap consultant for Geranicus or at Geranicus, what does that really mean? So to get this all started, here's the guy, you all know his name, my roommate, and I'll let him take that from here. What's Geranicus, Nick? What's Geranicus, JMV? <coughs> So Geranicus is the name I was given the nickname by a close friend of mine a few years ago and it became my Instagram title. Um, then I, I took that and I created a company with it because it's a very unique name. Um, so I created Geranicus Music Group, which is a management company first and foremost. Um, the goal obviously is to expand beyond that, to become a full-fledged record label and to bring talented artists together. Under dragons. Well, first of all, who, who is your main artist that you're working with? Okay. Right so, Geranicus Music Group has only one artist right now. Uh, primarily because I'm the only employee, the CEO of Don or whatever. So, I can only manage one person at this point. It takes a lot of time and resources. So, I decided to invest all of it into one artist named Warren Major. Um, if you follow me on anything, you've probably seen uh, He. <laughs> He's a struggling up-and-comer who lives in Atlanta right now. He's from St. Louis, and uh, he reached out to me, I think in March, so four months ago. Um, and he wanted to help with uh, Spotify promotion. Uh, do you want me to get involved with that, or? Yeah, yeah, okay. so uh, actually let's break that out into further questions that way. Right. Like, so yeah, so Warren Major is my main artist, and I've been helping him to get exposure and handle the whole business side of his career. Um, I let him focus on the music and in return he's my artist. He signed to me, it's official, and uh, hopefully we're gonna make him big. Alright, so I know like when we were doing the Spotify thing or you were doing the Spotify thing and we were just like, hey dude, uh, we need a playlist for working out because at least for me when I go to the gym I need I don't listen to like only one genre of music but what I have noticed is that when I'm listening to rap, it doesn't even have to be like really high pitched in terms of like the music or fast going. It's just like anything that keeps me focused in yeah. what my what I'm supposed to be doing works best for me. And that I've, and I've noticed that's rap music for me. I pay attention to what I'm listening to, and it kind of dictates my workout as I go along. Uh, so how did Spotify? How did you just? come up with the idea of like, hey, we need a playlist on Spotify for that. And then how did that grow from being a playlist into JMG, Geranicus Music Group? So I started lifting in college, um, got really into it, and music was a big part of pull that. Pull it, pull You lift, bro? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I started lifting in college and I needed music for my playlists or for my workouts. And like everyone else, I had an iPod Nano and I would plug into my computer and <laughs> I go. Oh, it's just me? Yeah. I didn't Alright, well, I had this little iPod Nano that I took to the gym with me. And uh, every week I would update it with new songs that I found online. So I'd go find them, like Lil Wayne, you know, whatever pumped me up, download them, put them on my iPod, and then take that to the gym. And then my cousin, Gary, introduced me to Spotify and said it would change, change your life, and it did. So I got it, I made my playlist, called it Lifting Heavy Ass Weights, just because I thought it was funny, and I started growing the playlist. And uh, a couple years later, so this was two years ago, uh, I started getting followers. I had no idea what that meant. Apparently people had found my playlist, they liked it, and they were following it and using it for their workouts. It's like, oh, shit, that's cool, you know, I like that. And so it would go up and down, you know, 2,000, 3,000, whatever. And then uh, 
think about eight months ago, I hit close to 5,000. And that's when I was approached by Universal. Um, they have a whole section that's for digital distribution and streaming. And they reached out to me and said they like my playlist. It was getting a high listener ratio to the followers and lots of activity. So they decided to bring me on as a rap consultant, meaning that they would hire me to listen to songs, uh, mostly their songs, right? And decide if it was a good fit for my playlist. And that's how that got started. After that happened, I started learning more and more about the entire world behind Spotify and how much of a business it actually is. Playlists are the new radio stations. That's where people go to find new music, and that's what determines an artist's success, how much exposure they get. I realized that my playlists had a lot of power. If I put an artist on there, it could change their lives because of how much exposure they got with my, with my listeners. Um, that's... that's well, just like just having that playlist for me was I didn't have to put effort into finding music that would uh, work for me or I would get bored at some because I tend to get bored of just like listening to the same song uh, pretty fast and it's normal what people do so just having something that would be uh, just uh, constantly being updated without me putting any effort into it and the fact that it was the type of music that I love listening to was amazing and I think that a lot of people could uh, relate to that and that's probably why the followers kept on growing because it wasn't just a playlist that was there but it was being constantly updated and updated and curated so uh, it's yeah, impressive. It was, it was the first validation that I had good music taste. I guess. Like, it was all new. It was all songs that I was like, you know, I really like this. I was out there finding them, I was putting them on, and I kept getting followers. And that just made me feel good about myself. Like, hey, maybe I have a good ear for music. Um, and so that was my first validation in that area. Uh, I know that in the beginning, a lot of people were like, hey, uh, maybe what, what are you gonna do with this? And you, yeah. you did get approached by someone for like, what, selling that playlist for how Yeah, so I started getting- uh, Hold up, hold up. How many followers did you have when you got that offer? And what did they offer you? I have about 4,000 followers or something, maybe three or 4,000. And uh, that's when I started getting random Facebook messages <laughs> saying, hey, can I buy your playlist? Uh, can I swap out your songs for my songs? So I was like, no, fuck you, it's my gym playlist. He was offering me like a hundred bucks or something. And all my friends said to take it. They're like, what are you doing? That's a hundred bucks. I mean, it's just a playlist. All your friends? <laughs> I don't remember seeing that. Yeah. All, all, yeah. Most, 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 yeah, most of my But yeah, so that started happening and I didn't make much of it. And so it was a couple months later that I hit 5,000, Universal came in and then I, <laughs> I knew I can't sell the playlist. I mean, beyond the fact that it's what I use when I'm in the gym, that's gone, then my work workout stuff. Yeah, so it's just that it's it's kind of like when you think about it, it, the playlist found you instead of you finding the thing that you're doing now, right? So the oh, energy yeah. is all just an evolution of where you started that. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Playlist followers started growing. I was doing my consulting for Universal and a couple other labels. And uh, then the artists started messaging me. Uh, I would get random messages from artists on Facebook and Instagram saying, hey man, I love your playlist. Like, you think I could get on there? I was like, yeah, was, of course. You know, let me listen to your song and tell you if it's good fit. It was really exciting for me. You know, I was talking to artists. Like, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Now hearing people in music and then I'm talking to them one on one was just surreal. And then um, this dude named Orrin Major hit me up and he's like, hey bro, like I really like your playlist. Uh, can you check out my music, see what you think? I didn't respond. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, if you're listening to this, sorry, if you're watching it. And sorry, then visual. Orrin being the guy that he is followed up. Followed up a couple weeks later and he said, hey man, did you get a chance to listen yet? And I just happened to see that message and I replied and said, no, I didn't. Um, let me check it out now. And then instantly started listening. I was diving into all his music throughout the years on YouTube and Spotify. 
and I was extremely impressed. I mean, this guy, with the resources that he had and the amount of following that he had, he was putting on music that I really appreciated. Um, it wasn't about the beats, it wasn't about the melodies, it was about the substance in his lyrics. It's a very conscious lyricist, and I love that. Uh, so we started talking. But, but uh, I'm sorry I'm cutting you there, but it's, it's not just like one thing, you know, it all came together well. For someone who's not like, who didn't have all the resources in the world, the production value, yeah. for the beats, the music, and then the lyrics all coming together was really good. Yeah. And that's what got me listening to it after you told me about it. Yeah, yeah man, he's, he's full package. I just think he's got so much more to say. just want to help him get it out there, you know, get his message out. Uh, but yeah, so we started talking, and then a couple months went by, I was put, put I put him on my playlist because he had that song Spice, which is just a banger, it goes hard. And I started pushing him out to other playlists that I had, uh, other artists, and I started getting him in collaboration with other artists, feature verses, and then also helping him out with Facebook promotion. There are a lot of uh, hip hop pacemaker pages. I would contact them, say, hey man, can you check out this dude, Lauren Major? And they'd help me out. They'd hook him up, they'd share his videos. And then, uh, Warren started joking about me being his manager. And it's funny, I was, I was laughing a lot, you know, it's whatever. And then a couple weeks later, it happened again. Somebody asked me, hey, this guy's dope. Do you work with him? Um, I was like, yo, Warren, we got to figure out a relationship here. And he said, dude, I've already told you. I wanted you to be my manager. I was like, all right, we need to have a very serious talk about our professional relationship. And we did. And what was it? A month later, I created and founded my Dranix Management. And now he's officially signed to me. It's my company. So, like, you just said, like, how like, you had a professional uh, talk about, like, professional relationship and everything. And then saying that is pretty easy, but then putting it all down on paper yeah. is not. Yeah. And especially for someone who's not knowing about how that industry really works. I can share sure about it. Like how to <laughs> go from where to start and where to go. Yeah. It's just a whole beast on its own. So I remember like seeing you like staying up for like 4 a.m. just procrastinating about, man, where do I get these law firms to like help me out with this? Yeah. This law shit, I don't know what to do here. Yeah. And then it's just funny like, so you have to realize no one knows where to start. Where to start, whether in any industry or whatever you're trying to do, no one knows the blueprints to how you need to go about building a business uh, platform or whatever. But you have to put your due diligence into it. You have to do your research. You have to look into things by yourself and that's gonna make you more confident about where you currently are and where you wanna go uh, five years from now. And that's what this guy did. And honestly, like he's a big mentor to me when it comes to things like these. Like when I was starting off the YouTube channel, I didn't know what I was doing. And I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm still trying to figure Just out. Just gotta do it. Yeah. Execute. Yeah, so, and it, there's this one line that he tells me every time. And I know it's easy to say than to actually go about doing it, but it's more about documenting than creating. And like, it's starting to really get into my head that yeah it is like if i because when you're creating stuff it's just it just gets overwhelming and you can't keep up with it so just like right now what we're doing is just answering the questions that we've got from other people or just like things that have been in our mind but we never like put it down on paper all right going back to music uh, what's she, uh what's the name of that album that one's has um, right now this debut album blinded by ambition um was released in january and it's on all the major platforms january Spotify, this like, year january yeah. this year yeah okay. he's fresh up and cover um and i've helped together we work together and he's over Thirty-five thousand monthly listeners as of right now. Um, over a hundred thousand total streams on, on his album. Um, he has some downloads, but mainly it's about the streaming services because we want everyone to hear his message. We don't care if we get money; we just want people to listen to him.